James catches, puts up the three. Won't go. Rebound box. Back out to Allen. His three-pointer. Bang! Tie game with one Oh, oh yeah. We packing somebody up oh. tonight. Hey. Come on in, take your shoes off before we close the door. Oh. Few rules, heat pack in the air. We about to blow. This the basement, ain't nobody safe. You already know. Oh. Grab a seat and kick your feet before you get too comfortable. You want the X's and the O's, the tray, yes and no. Oh. Friends and the foes, the butlers and the heroes. You can feel it in your soul. But when the ring is the goal, but if somebody need to go, we be sure to let you know. Oh. Going hard for my dogs is an everyday thing. Oh. Like Jimmy down the lane of 13 off the screen. Oh. Whole squad keep it tucked like number 17. Oh. Bring your takes and your memes. Going hard for the thing oh. ah. going down in the basement oh. Oh. Ah. it's going down in the basement oh. get your takes off get your get your takes oh. off ah. going down in the basement oh. yeah welcome to the basement sports network post game show sign royal on a two-year deal <laughs> bitch i'm ready because what they got tonight ain't good e fucking enough Miami lost this game 98-91 to the Philadelphia 76ers in a lot of ways. Tyrese Maxey went a little crazy. Kelly Oubre Jr. went a little crazy. Kyle fucking Lowry. They let that man go crazy on our ass too. But I am joined today by a full panel. Love to see it. Love to see it. Got my guy LJ, host of the Random Scrub Heat podcast. LJ, how you doing today? I'm doing good. Um, sports betting is legal in North Carolina as of last Monday, and Don't we're Miami Heat fans. <laughs> so Don't we run know. It <laughs> I, all I'm saying is I've been making a lot of money betting against the Heat. That's all I'll say. <laughs> also, pulling up for the first time in a long time, my boy Sheltman. Sheltman, how are you doing today, bro? I'm good, man. Uh, fatherhood kicking my ass, but we're here. Glad I could be back, making an appearance. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. We never officially said it, but Sheltman is a new father. So congratulations to my guy again. That's the reason for his absence the past couple of weeks, getting acclimated to a new lifestyle. Uh, and also, round out this panel, we got two members of the Kane gang, starting with the chairman of the Kane gang, Kane, Ricky J. Mark. Ricky, how you doing today, brother? You know, um, things are going pretty well. Uh, I, put, I ran my robe through the cleaners. It smells wonderful. Uh, other than that, I've got some thoughts about tonight that I need to get off my chest. And uh, from what I'm told, this is a good place to do it. So here I am. No, absolutely. You know what, Ricky? Not just a good place. This is the best place to vent and let off all of your frustrations. And if you're new to this place, then make sure that you subscribe and like this video uh, to make sure that you're always in the loop and get a chance to get your uh, opinions off your chest. Right about this panel, last and certainly least, in my opinion, we got that boy, Kane Kendall. Kendall, how you doing today? And brother, I'm doing well because I love when I make the right decisions in life. <laughs> and this right here was one of them. You see, oh, yesterday, yesterday. you see, yesterday, today afternoon, I was at home and I said, around it was time to make dinner. What I knew. And I said, make dinner tonight or skip tomorrow. Because the Heat got a game. 50% off Heat win promo code. I said, you know what? I'm going to go with it tonight. <laughs> and good God, am I happy that I did. <laughs> because, yeah, no. Um, not doing well after that, what I saw. I'm doing great, like but that team ain't. I'm, my fandom not. That team stinks, just being honest. I want to thank Alex Campbell for kicking us off with the 199 dono. He yeah. said zero BAM shots in the fourth quarter, four BAM shots in the second half, which was fucking atrocious. But, Ricky, you seem most anxious to get your takes off, so we're going to start with you tonight. Give me your thoughts on the game, brother. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I am not pleased with what I saw out of my nephew tonight. Uh, he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn, and by him I'm talking about Jaime Hawkes Jr., uh, that man shot three for 13 from the field tonight. Kelly Oubre took his cookies. Hey, yo. And I wasn't, I just wasn't pleased. It just didn't work out for him tonight. It was ugly. I'm not exactly sure what Patty Mills is doing. 
Um, I quite frankly, I you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, I know there was the the little 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 comparison with him and Dion Waiters and everything, but I'm not gonna lie, I, I felt like I got a lot of Waiters energy out of Terry Rozier tonight. It was a very, you know, you know, there's a saying, the duality of man. Uh, Terry Rozier helped us get back in the game tonight, but then he quite possibly took us out of it with some of the wildest shot attempts I've seen <laughs> this side of uh, Flocka attack. I'm, I'm, I mean this. This is crazy. I know we're going to talk about it and all that other stuff, but I, I, I got to harp on Jaime Jaquez. It, this, it was ugly tonight. He couldn't hit anything. And quite frankly, neither did the Heat. They shot about 39% from the field. And like I think I mentioned during the first, uh, during the halftime show with Culture Shock, please go ahead and follow them at Culture Shock Queens on uh, on uh, on Twitter. Good collective of uh, young women who are Heat fans and want to talk basketball. Young! Heather is on that team now. You're talking about young women. Yeah, but the average age is still... Um, and she bring and it, that bits up four years, but it's still under thirty. It's she's the only. Is one. It? The, no. rest of them are, the rest of them are in their. Uh, let's move on. Um, yeah, Jaime Jaime did not do well tonight. Uh, a lot of his intangibles were quite frankly overshadowed by what um, the one black man alive that cheats Kelly Oubre did. Um, he it's it was it was ugly all around. But I, I was happy to see that the the Heat still had enough fight in them to uh, come back and make it close. That Terry Rozier that brought Miami back was the Terry Rozier that the Heat front office saw the night Big Cat scored 62 and still lost. That was the same Terry Rozier. Unfortunately, the one we also saw tonight was the same Terry Rozier that came to Miami about a week later. So we'll sort that out. But eh, this was one of those losses. I'll get to Bam later. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there was a fearsome foursome of terrible people out there playing basketball, including Duncan Robinson before he went out with like the the little shoulder injury or whatever it was. Uh, he was playing terrible. Uh, Terry, Jaime, and Patty Mills, all of well, Delon Wright too. And if you want to count Seamus Highsmith as a basketball player, he was. He was okay. I ain't going to say he was terrible. He was all right. I want to thank James Todd with the $10 dono. not He said availability is the best ability. I'm really convinced Miami feels like they can win with anyone. Why are they allergic to players who are actually talented and can actually play consecutive games? My brother, my brother. If we had to answer for that question, we would be in the front office. Uh, Kim, we coming to you next, bro. Give me your thoughts on the game. Bro, these niggas not serious about winning, bro. Like, we're not talking about no referees, bro. Like, <laughs> the NBA is not calling fouls no more. Niggas got to be men out here. Like, correct. No more, no more 30 balls, you know, walking, getting eight of them from the free throw line. Niggas got to put their 10, 10 toes down, dick in the dirt, feet on the concrete, and handle up because <laughs> they ain't rewarding it. And I respect it, bro. Like, them niggas is trash, bro. Like, I ain't finna even get at just one player, bro. Like that team, bro. Like dog, I saw, I saw for the second game in a row, purposely Spo play have to play DeLong Wright and Patty Mills, bro. At, on some future shit, have to ha at the same damn time, like, <laughs> bro. Like in twenty twenty four, fam, like. Under no circumstances should they ever touch a basketball court unless the score is plus 25 or, like, three minutes left and the game is over, bro. Like, what this, what that front office, bro, and everybody involved in making front personnel decisions has done to the game that I used to love for the Miami Heat has been obliterated to, like, nails on a chalkboard, fam, like, Knees tried to throw Terry Rozier on my roster, bro. I like watching him play from a distance. And that's that distance is strong. It's four <laughs> games out of the year. It's right where LJ live at. <laughs> yeah. I, LJ, LJ I'm a little a, too close for comfort. You know or or I was for the last, like, three years. Bro, like, 
I want to see Terry Rozier play four basketball games a year. And it's not even because he's a bad player, bro, but just the under the circumstances in which, like, he's on this team, bro, like, it was a nasty game, bro. And the fuck the fuck, fuck whoever, everybody making decisions, fuck them all, bro, because <laughs> this shit ain't it, gang. To be honest with you, bro, like, I know this ain't our bag. Like, the referee thing ain't, like, that, the, the referees aren't what lost us the game. Like, I will put that out there plainly. But to say that objectively, this was a a horrifically officiated game. Oh, yeah. Would be, both like, sides. legitimate. Like, that's both, like, both sides of the ball. Like, this game was just officiated horribly. Like, For I ain't been, teams, I ain't been though, That's why it don't matter. Yeah, like, that's why, that's why it balanced out. But you know what I mean? Like, of course, we feel some type of way about the Kyle Lowry foul on Caleb and shit. Like, there's a couple of other missed calls. But it's just like, the shit was happening their way, too. So it's like, you got to take the good with the bad in that regard. W Brody 55 with the $5. Don't know. We appreciate your game. He said, if we don't win shit this year, they need to get Jimmy and Tyler the fuck up out of here. Uh, he's going to get some talent. Or I'll yes. help Bam pack his bags, my damn self, if they don't win. Hey, brother, you got a whole lot of dip in your chip right there with that if. That's when was like the last time somebody. they won, though? 2013. Yeah, what are we talking about if they don't win like we've been winning titles the last few years? No, Relax. That's 11 years ago. Uh, Want to hear from Shelton because I haven't heard from him in a long time. My boy, give me your thoughts on this game. I mean, this is like a classic, you know, current era of Miami Heat basketball. You had a little bit of everything this game. You had uh, Bam being the best player on the court and being the fourth most field goals attempted on the team. You had the duality of Terry Rozier where he looked, you know, good at times, but absolute trash at times. You had an overhyped rookie prospect that everyone was crowning as the next, you know, future franchise player um, who was absolutely piss and shit himself in the fourth quarter. Uh, you had Caleb Martin, CTE. But you also had Caleb Martin yeah. saving the game. Yeah, that man, that man yeah, I don't know what happened there. Um, and then you had like random generated 2K player Thomas Bryant actually play somewhat well. Uh, it, it was just a shit show all around. But this is this is what you should expect from this roster. 91 points in 2024. Like, I, I don't understand. Like, this is going back to the if comment. Like, they, they are not winning the title. They might make it out of the East. Because the East is full of people that don't know how to play basketball, and and the Heat will just find a way to string games together in a seven game series. They might do that. They are not beating Denver. They will not beat Denver in a seven game series. It will not happen. You better hope somebody else comes out of the West because it's not going to happen. So the if they don't win the title, it's it's when they don't win the title. And will they make wholesale changes? Probably not. They'll run it back a sixth time. Tyler Hero, future franchise player. Uh, Bam Adebayo probably going to team up in Oklahoma City with SGA and Brown or something. I don't know. They they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> but yeah, like it's 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 that reality that's kind of like we've kind of gone through it over the past couple of weeks. Where it's like, yeah, obviously it feels like they're in a position where they're they're going to be forced to make wholesale changes, but they're not. They're going to make tertiary moves, like small little tinkering. They're going to tinker. They're not going to change what's going on. So it's like. You can hope for the offseason all you want to, but you're inevitably setting yourself up for disappointment. Uh, Alex Campbell, again, with the 499, don't know, said Jimmy just had to beat Tobias in the secret street clothes contest elite mentality. Listen, bro, Jimmy looked good on that sideline tonight. LJ, want to hear your thoughts on tonight's game, bro? Well, <laughs> Sheltman said it. Uh, they scored 91 points in the year of our Lord 2024. Let me just run you guys back some of these final scores and how many points the Heat have scored recently. Um, they are currently, as it stands, two and five in their last seven. Um, they scored 91 tonight. They scored 104 and 108, respectively, against the Pistons, one of the worst teams in the league. The worst team in the league. They they should have. Or they're in the running with the with the Wizards. In my no, record, be damned. Like just from the sheer <laughs> basketball perspective, that team is ass. And this is why they're two and five. They should be one and six because Cade Cunningham's dumbass brain. Pulled up from three with 10 seconds left on the clock last game. Get, take the last shot, Bozo. Why, why are you shooting? Take overtime. Instead, you lose at the buzzer to a Bam Adebayo three-pointer. Dumbass. That's why you're the Detroit Pistons. But then after that, uh, 88 against the Nuggets. Oh, but we held them to 100. Look at the other scores that the Nuggets are having. Cool. Take a fucking ribbon. Nice job. 
You held the Nuggets to 100 points. You didn't break 90. Then before that, let, let's go back again. 108 in a loss to the Wizards. Then you get 100 flat against the Oklahoma City Thunder. And then before that, 108 against Denver. They haven't sniffed 110 in an NBA that's completely derivative of defense, completely drawn on offense. Heine Hawkes was ass. Bam didn't take a fucking shot in the fourth quarter. He, it, it's, and Duncan got hurt, but before he got hurt, he was one for five. I hope it's not serious. They just call it like back spasms or something, a back flare up. I don't think it's anything serious. I hope it's not. Terry, Ricky, and everyone else has talked on it too. It was like the duality of Terry Rozier. It, 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 I guess he hasn't been great, but at the same time, it's the Tyler Hero argument. Who else is going to take the shots? Because Jimmy ain't out there. Bam sure as fuck doesn't want to take him. He didn't even look at the rim. So it's like, it's exactly what you would expect it to be. And and just as a, a nice silver lining to cap the rant, um, this time last year, the Miami Heat, you know, the most boring, um, uninterested regular season that we have all watched in God knows how long. Because at least when they missed the playoffs with the Tyler Johnson, Hassan Whiteside thing, at least they went 30 and 11 down the stretch. It was entertaining basketball. Last year was so far away from that. For me, I enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed it. Popularity be damned. I enjoyed it personally. I didn't enjoy last year. They had 34 losses on March 18th last year. They have 31 losses on March 18th this year. They're the same pack of ass they've been. They ran a lineup today where they had one player on the floor that was on the team last year. They like their team, but do they really? Because they keep adding a whole bunch of other shit that doesn't do anything. So it's like they want to switch it up, but they don't know how to. And this is the result that you get. I think what's like bothering me about this kind of like new addition shit is like the sheer amount of time I have to watch Patty Mills play basketball is starting to get on my fucking nerves. I like, thought I, just, I had the same exact fucking thought when Kyle Lowry joined the team. I was like, well, I don't like Kyle Lowry, but at least he can't hurt my team anymore. I had the same idea with Patty Mills. I was wrong on both of them because both of them <laughs> suck ass and have cost the heat games. So they're still hurting sure. us just in our Jersey. The nasty man pulling up one time with the $50 dono. He said Terry had some second half knee goes. <laughs> today. I was about to say, man, I, I just read it. it. A brother, I'm not gonna. You're not gonna trick me, like George. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm a lot of things. I I have a higher IQ than George. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We got the smart whites here tonight. They weren't gonna fall for it. Uh, but let's talk about Bam a little bit, bro. Because at halftime, we gave him glowing reviews in that culture shock halftime spaces. Like we were talking, we were bigging him up. He was six for six. At the time, he ended the game with fucking 10 shots, bro. Like, what was it, Ricky, bro? Like, was it them not going to Bam or was it Bam just kind of turning, taking his foot off the pedal? I think it was a variety of things. Uh, I know that there is going to be a train of thought that suggests that given that Bam is on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, the first night in which he put up a stat, like a statistical like smorgasbord, if you will, uh, was probably why he might not have had the energy or whatever to finish this game uh, the way he was supposed to. On the other hand, he is in better shape right now than I probably ever will be in my life. And I used to hoop in school. Um, yeah, probably. You know, <laughs> I... He trying to make oh, it yeah, seem no. like he in the same, no, he like was... he is spitting distance of Bam athletically. No, no, no. He's he's world class. I'm not even trying to. I'm not even trying to act like I was crazy like that. I was alright, but anyway, that's that's not. It's not about me right now. But like it to see that he only took four more shots in the second half. You're giving egregious. below average athlete at best. Just want to put that out there. What was that, Royal? I said you're giving below average athlete at best. What you thought I was gonna fall? Ricky? No, who's, no, no. Who's who's? No, oh, okay. I'm just making sure. Oh, oh, I, you, oh, you, oh, you, you talk about, you talk about the height. Oh, oh. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't hear things when they, usually when they come down from the mountain. <laughs> Tell that nigga anyway. meet him in that a gap. <laughs> uh, come on now, come on now. That sounds, that sounds, sounds sus. That sounds sus. Um, but yeah, nah, like, nah, nah, nah. but no, like it's it it, it was wild because Bam wasn't even looking for any shots in the fourth quarter. They didn't really. I mean, I don't think they really changed anything up defensively with him. He could. He was the best big man on the floor. Uh, the only big man on the floor, one might even venture is to say. And quite frankly, it's indefensible. Uh, he should have been more aggressive in that fourth quarter. He should have been more aggressive, quite frankly, the moment he came back on the floor after the Sixers went up. Uh, 
there, there's no reason for him to have played the way he did. And I don't want to hear anything about like, oh, well, you know, um, uh, he might have been nursing an injury and doesn't want to talk about it or he's tired. No, go go play. You're playing. You see, this was an important game to get because now the Sixers, I believe, are in sixth, ironically enough. And the, uh, the Heat may be – they may be back. They may be down to eight right now, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, you the scoreboard no, no, watchers no, we can correct so, me on. Yeah, no, we were uh, ahead of Philadelphia because we owned the tiebreaker. They hadn't beat us all year long, but since they beat us, uh, the time they have a better record. Okay. So now I think they're in seven and we're in eight. But if we end up with the same record, the Heat beat them more times than they beat Miami. Mm-hmm. So the head to head gives Miami yeah. the advantage. So in that case, honestly, I'm not. If anybody oh, here is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, seventh. Okay. If anybody here yeah. is hoping for a tiebreaker to save you, don't mm-mm, relax. All right, but all right, that boy needs milk. Hashtag hold him down. Pop. Um, look, that doesn't mean anything because as one of our fellow network folk mentioned not too long ago, the Heat have a really easy record, but they haven't capitalized on it. Quite frankly, they haven't. And even in the games in which they've won, it's been more along the lines of just escaping by the skin of your teeth. That's not acceptable. That's not conducive to a successful playoff run, and you are not going to capture lightning in a bottle for a second season in a row. That said, the Miami Heat are going to win the NBA championship, and Bam Adebayo is going to score 40, and he's going to average 40 and 20 in the finals. I I was about to say, good brother, this is the same formula they used last year. Play these dogfight-ass games with everybody so that when you get in a dogfight-ass game in the playoffs – it's just a regular ass game to the Miami Heat. But I get until point. they you play a better team. This is, I mean, is it though? Nuggets. Like, <laughs> Boston a better team. Oh, were they? Regular. They season. are. I mean, it's, what are you going? But, off? A, but this is what I'm saying though. Like it's, it's like I get your point. Your point is well taken. Like, yes, Miami should not be building habits like this of being in these dogfight ass games against teams that are inferior competition but you also can't like i don't know like you can't discredit what miami does in these games or how they learn from these games and then use that come postseason time thank you nasty man again with a two dollar don't know he says six sixers seventh pacers eight uh heat right now uh either way the no the pacers lost tonight refresh your standards and see if that changed a little bit uh kendall want to come to you about bam like why was it that Bam's affecting this scene to tail off towards the end of this game. Um, well, I think when he got back in the game, like, yeah, I don't think he was aggressive at all. But I just just from a standpoint of like, bro, like, you gotta like, you don't gotta you gotta kind of yoke niggas up in that huddle, like, before you come out in that timeout and just say one, two, three. You point at the other three players, not named Terry Rozier, and say, if you have that ball, relax. <laughs> Think twice and look at me. Don't if do I'm nothing. Doing this, yes. If I'm doing this, give it the fuck here. <laughs> right. Terry, if you get that bitch, you wait until I come set you a screen before you do anything. Bruh, it's like, he didn't even, bruh, it was... He dead ass just did not touch the pill, bro. And that was the crazy thing about it. Like, he didn't touch the ball. That and the combination of, and I got, I kind of get it. Like, they started coming back a little bit with him on the bench. Bro, he played 32 minutes. He didn't get extended. Like, he didn't even play his regular. I don't think Bam averages 32 minutes a game on the season. So, he didn't even. There were three people who played more minutes than Bam Adebayo tonight. Right. So, which tells me <laughs> Spo did not give a fuck to win this game. <laughs> because, bro, that's that's insane. He should have been on the court for three, like, for, for six more minutes minimal. Like, if not eight. Um, But, yeah, everything, he was flowing. But, yeah, I just think, like, he just didn't demand a basketball, which he kind of has to do. Which is weird, too, because it's like. I get it, bro. Like the two, the good soldier syndrome. Like things are going well, so you know. And he like, also doing everything, Kendall, bro. Like, and that's another thing. That's why it's like, bro, bro, work, bro working his ass off. Oh, so, like, 
like the thing that just kills, like, bruh, we run in a two three zone against a Philadelphia team that don't have Joel Embiid or Tobias Harris. That is just insane because the game started out in man and couldn't nobody stay in front of Tyrese Maxey or Kelly Uber. And Mo Bamba got a couple of threes when Bam wasn't on that, but they didn't even play Mo Bamba like that, to be honest with you. But Mo Bamba yeah, got a I, but I felt like they was letting Mo Bamba shoot, which I was fine with. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Yeah, like, if he wide open, let him shoot, shoot bro. Like, but, yeah, I think it's dead ass. I think Spo didn't care to win the game, so he didn't, like, extend his minutes. <laughs> hey, now, he he might be. That's what it kind of feel like. Because, brother, when I saw DeLon Wright, Patty Mills, Hami, uh, no, Kayla Martin and, and Hayward Highsmith, bro, and Bam on that court, bro. I even had to send a tweet. I was like, bro, that man do not deserve that, bro. Like, that is an insane lineup to anchor. Like, <laughs> who's running, who's initiating the offense in that? Who would you rather have dribble the ball up in that situation? Uh, Bam. Right. Bam, Bam, probably the best option. But Who if he would takes you that, have shoot the ball out of all five of them. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you rather have play me? Bro, it's like the But that's right. them like that's them really like leaning into like that defensive identity though. Like is it? Patty but Mills it didn't on the work, court, brother. Yeah, but like everything else around him is a plus defender. Delon Wright is on the court, bro. Delon Wright ain't no plus Deron defender. Wright was, De- Deron Wright was getting his face fried off today. Like I, he wasn't and You know he why wasn't he's a plus not a defender, plus defender to me cuz bro Washington wasn't – I don't think they're good at defense. Wouldn't you think he would get some minutes over there? He don't. When he was in Atlanta, they wasn't known for no defense. Don't you think he would get some minutes over there? He didn't. So it's like, And to be fair, like, people remember him for that, like, series where he was doing against Tyler Hero. He – like, before that, I, I know a lot of y'all don't really watch Atlanta basketball, and I hate that I did too. But he wasn't playing before, like, that. <laughs> like, he wasn't in their rotation. Bro, it's just like so. I think he he definitely Bam could have done better, bro. Like, just like vocalizing, like, "Hey, bro, you demanded the last shot from Terry Rozier like, just last night, just yesterday afternoon." Like, bro, you could do that on every possession. Like, fucked it. I would rather pro am Bam, Miami pro am Bam out there. Like, I don't give a fuck, brick everything, bro. But I would rather us lose by twenty with you taking all the shots. I'm not even gonna lie. Then like, us nip and tuck and you like. And he did a good job of like carrying the load in the first half, and like that shit just went south in the third. But like, nah, bro. Like the talent on the roster, fam, is just insane. Well, the yeah, lack, I, of- like, and I don't want anybody to think like because we got, we on four platforms right now. I want to make sure that we remind people of that we're on YouTube, we're on Twitch, we're on Twitter, and we're also on Instagram Live right now. Uh, I don't want anybody to think that we're disparaging the game that Bam had. Like, by, for for all intents and purposes, like the game he played was fine, <laughs> but you just you're looking for more when you're at that much of a talent disparity. Like, you're looking for him to kind of lead these guys more aggressively in terms of the offensive scoring output. Uh, Nasty man again with a two dollar dono said Delon equals a third string point guard with six man opportunity. He wasn't even getting six man opportunity. That was uh. Fucking Patty Mills getting that shit, but like they realize that that's probably not sustainable. Patty Mills, man, is probably not sustainable. Shut me, want to hear your thoughts on kind of like what happened with Bam, where the fall off came from. I don't know. Like that first quarter was immaculate. Like he had, uh, he was going to average or he was very easily going to hit a triple double if he was just continuing that pace. And I mean, like LJ mentioned, he didn't shoot a shot in the fourth. And yeah, like a lot of the blame should go to him for not demanding the ball, like Kendall's saying. But I think at a certain point, like, okay, if Bam's not demanding the ball and I'm his teammate, like, that's that, like, that's our best player. Like, I need to get him the ball. Like, I I need to tell him in the huddle, like, bro, I'm gonna run a set for you, or like, coach, coach Spo, can we draw something up for Bam? Like, the, they're it, it just seemed like a concerted effort all around from not only just Bam but everyone, like, not wanting to try to get him involved at all in that fourth quarter and yeah like I get it he's doing a bunch of other shit and he did still have a great game but like I would have rather had him go 8 of 16 tonight and we lose than him go 8 of 10 and 
I mean, we still lost anyway, but it's just it's just a mentality thing. It's like you would prefer him to go like 0 or 6 when he checked in the game to end like yeah. Like, yeah, like it, it has go I, 0 6. I don't give a fuck what happens because at the end of the day, at least like you had the ball. Fuck it. Like, yeah, like at least you went for it. Like it, it feels like there's something just missing. Like you you didn't take the chance, you know, to to put your stamp on the game when you're just like, all right, I'm not even gonna shoot in this fourth quarter. And I, I don't know. It, it's it's something that we've been talking about ad nauseum for the last five years. Um my bad. I don't know. Man. I just hear Kendall hammering the hell out of them keys. <laughs> no, yeah, I wasn't on mute. I was just telling Eric. Yeah. I was still adjusting to pull up that to pull up that tweet I just sent in the in the chat. We that, gonna, that is a good segue because that we're gonna, uh, we gonna cleanse our basketball souls. Right? Yeah, that that is that is some real hoop right there. <laughs> because that is that is the highest echelon of real Negro hoop in which I was birthed and raised on. Like. Come on now, you gotta cook yeah. now. You gotta cook when they give you the, the uh, ingredients to do so now. So Max, man, you. appreciate you. Oh, oh go ahead, bro. Go. No, no, I you got it. You know, you I got can read popcorn, popcorn, popcorn. All right, nasty man. Um, Sports Center, me, uh, ten dollar dono. Me and Petty Mills, same age. Da 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 da. I watched D Wade in middle school. You an old ass nigga, bro, and I appreciate the. Uh, so the fact that you called him an old ass nigga and D Wade was drafted my freshman year of high school. Makes me feel like some type of way. I ain't gonna lie. Kind of hey, working on that square. That's your business. <laughs> kinda, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I kind of want to come out there. You know what I mean? Put them dudes up, and then you know. Okay, no, you know, you always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Just know, but I, but I already know. <laughs> Just know I don't fight. Uh, on, the Negro <laughs> opinions expressed by these two gentlemen here do not reflect all Negro can dumb. You re- can you remove uh, that? That. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. If we you call the Negroes here, cause we airing that bitch out, brother. I'm not going with about? nobody. When I talk about fighting, I'm talking about shooting you. That's what I mean by that. We got 407 people in here. What's up, gang? Welcome to the basement. Make sure y'all yeah. like the video. Make sure y'all subscribe. Yeah, niggas is angry. Uh, LJ, want to hear your thoughts about Bam? I know we kind of like took a while to get away from that, but want to hear your no. uh. No, it wasn't your fault. Don't worry. I got to make sure, you know. LJ, want to give you an opportunity to talk hey, hold about hold on, hold uh, on, hold on. Justin, go ahead, play it. Not attempt in that first half. Another turnover for Utah. Edwards gets it back. Bro, will oh. we get someone on this roster that can do half of that? Like, Heat fans will be enamored. What was it? Help me, he just killed the guy. <laughs> hey, bro. Oh my god. I wouldn't have been mad at it. Bro, John Collins is a real pain taker. I don't know that about that. I gotta, mm. I gotta be fuck. You don't know you gotta watch those videos, but there's some don't worry about it. Uh LJ, wanna hear your talks? Uh what are your thoughts about uh Bam out of bio? Uh yeah. Um Thomas Bryant took nine shots. That is one less uh, than number 13, and that therein lies the issue. If you remember earlier in the year when Bam had a great game, I forget who they were playing, but in the post-game interview on the court, they're like, Bam, what was going right? And he said, they were calling plays for me. And he said it in like a passive-aggressively joking manner. I don't have the clip, but if somebody can find the clip, y'all know what I'm talking about. That's kind of the issue. They're not, they don't call plays for him. He he finds his offense in the flow of the offense. There's not really out of bounds plays specifically drawn up for Bam. There's not half court sets specifically drawn up for Bam. He does DHOs. He says pick and rolls. He does flares. Like he, there's just not really like dribble drives or anything set up for him. And he has good enough handles. His hands kind of suck on catching things, but it's like he can handle, he can drive, he can shoot, draw something up for him. I, th- I think he does, but no, at, le- at least good. better. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Meet me halfway. Meet me halfway. Can, contrary to what they had on the court tonight. Who else did they have on the court tonight? On the roof. Who else? LJ, we on the whole. We we we, 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 we on something completely new. You, you almost you almost reached Ricky J. Mark. The I'm just, I understand what Ricky's getting at, too. I, I under, I've seen that face, too. Oh, no, times. he did. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. that's exactly why I was reacting the way I was. I know, I understand. But 
but that that's that's basically exactly what it is. They they don't call things. They don't call enough sets for Bam to be able to actually like use him the correct way that they should be in a close game where no one else wants to take a shot except Terry Rozier. Like you could say like, all right, Terry's like the most offensively talented player in the flow that they had going tonight. Why is Jaime Jaquez also taking like 15 fourth quarter shots? Like they mm, probably don't. I, can, can we splice that in half and give Bam a little bit of that? One, two, three, maybe. I don't know. That oh. That's, I feel like that that's your answer. Okay, so uh, D, she she didn't mean elite. I can tell you that she meant elote man. She said, "Question for the panel: Is the elote man still untouchable?" She ain't mean elite at all. But <laughs> it was just a typo. But I know my dog. She meant he was. So never. that kind of leads me that he was. Come on, brother. It, knew you know this panel. He was never that. <laughs> we were touch. He was touchable this summer. For Dane. Before he ever put on a heat jersey. <laughs> but that does kind of lead me into this question, bro. Like about tonight specifically. Because I don't I can't figure out who was worse, him or Terry Rozier. Which one of them do you felt like hurt the heat more? Terry or Jaime Hawkins? Go ahead. Kendall. Kayla Martin. <laughs> Brother, listen. <laughs> And and the reason why is not exactly on him. It's due to the media's narratives that they push from the Miami Heat themselves. Those gunshots, you heard them. Uh, yeah, the um the Miami Heat when they was talking when when the name Kelly Oubre surfaced and the Miami Heat or him being interested. Uh, talking you. crazy about this man. Thank you, Alex Campbell, for the 199. Don't I don't want to just sit there. What y'all do here on Jimmy from Mitchell, obviously. But, anyways, hey, yes, yo. there was a time where Kelly Uber's interest with Miami was there. And they said they would rather give their guys who's been in the system for a couple of years chances. <sighs> to me, that screamed. Caleb Martin, do the contract situation and everything. And tonight, I got another name out of there. Shameless High Smith is another one. I think he he's a part of that as well. Jamal Kane, Jamal Kane is a part of right. That. But when Kelly Uber, yeah, Caleb Martin can't stay in front of him. Uh, High Smith can't defend him. Twenty two points, brother, and eleven rebounds. What the fuck is going on? And that ain't even the worst of the worst, because we I think we're gonna get there. But Caleb, bro, this was a game. I'm not gonna hold you, bro. Like, you gotta, you gotta kind of like because see me, I got I got a good memory, bro. I remember a lot of things, like and it's terrifying when, sometimes. I ain't gonna hold you. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like when you put that out there, like they put that out there that like, oh. This was the guy, you know what I'm saying? I had a list of dudes. I Malik Beasley shooting 43%. Hey, quick 22. Happened out of nowhere. Uh Lonnie Walker was another one on your list. Brother, listen, listen, listen. Dante Spears, boy, you from uh Power? You Mecca, huh? Okay. But yeah, Kayla Martin, bro. And the worst part about it is, bro, is that in that first half, man, Kalo seven. Was on a high because every time he's seen your ass, it's like he, it's like Kyle Lowry kind of just came out there with the intent that he was gonna try to win this game, and he was gonna try to make an example out of somebody on this roster by any and means it, necessary and by hook or by crook. It just <laughs> it he cast his net out there and said, "Who gonna bite this bait?" Caleb. It, it was Caleb Martin. <laughs> Went straight at him, came up empty both times, just and one on him on some Kyle Lowry shit. Like it was a bad day for Caleb, bro. He was the worst of the worst for me because he had been playing well. So it was like, bro, for your game to tell off like this, and then and to be pick a bitch for Kyle Lowry, bro. Shout out Juan Cardona, like to be pick a bitch for Kyle Lowry for him, like that's unacceptable on my watch, bro. Like that can't go down. I Caleb is a good Caleb was a good throw in, you know what I'm saying? Like Caleb was a good throw in, but I think I took him off because 
it felt like he kind of evened it out in that fourth quarter. We lost, bro. This is real. But it felt like he was just kind of like – he was the one who felt like he kind of turned it around a little bit more so than those other two. Like, yeah, Terry had his moments, but it never felt like felt like he kind of turned this game around. It felt like Caleb kind of turned this game around towards the end. Shelton, so we're just going to stick to the original two. Jaime Jaquez or Terry Rozier, which one of them was – no, I'm not throwing yours in there. You saying the nigga can't stay on task? No, I'm saying – no, you can't. <laughs> you just do what you want, and then I make everybody else follow the rules. Or well, I try to anyway. <laughs> but go ahead, Shelby. Yeah, I think my uh, avatar name kind of indicates the person I'm going to select here. Um, bro has been ass, like, and not just tonight. I posted the stats for the last 20 games on Twitter. Um, he's averaging 10 points a game over the last 20 games on shitty splits, like. He has not been good. Uh, the the current rookie point per game leaders, uh, a certain Cam Whitmore is 0. 0.4 points per game behind Jaime Jaquez for the year. And he's doing it. He's doing it in 12 less minutes per game. 12 less minutes per game. 0. 0.4. So you want to sit here and tell me, we drafted Jaime Jaquez because he was uh, an NBA ready talent that was ready to contribute to this, uh, you know, this this team that's ready to go to the finals again or ready to compete for a championship. OK, that's fine. I need to see that. And when I don't see that, I'm going to criticize him. And when people are tweeting in November and December about Jaime, Jaime Jaquez being a future franchise cornerstone, uh, untouchable, um, you know, future all star, I believe someone tweeted um, his his floor is prime Gordon Hayward all star in Utah. Um, that was Ariel he, Atias. Former member of the Basement Sports Network. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to throw. I didn't want to throw full Shout shade. Out to Ariel Atias, but boy. You Ken, Kendall was, was cool with that. Nah, he swung for the fences, and that ball ended up in the catcher's mitt. Bubba. Swing and a miss, bro. You, <laughs> you got. You got tweets like this where Jaime is the best 18th pick since, and you got people on this list that are literal all stars like David West. Um, it, it's, it's absurd to me how often this franchise puts people on a pedestal after 10 games. Um, he, he's, he's a, he's going to be a contributing role player for his entire career. But the fact that you motherfuckers sit here after 10 games, 15 games, and you tell me he's untouchable in a trade package for Donovan Mitchell or, or any of these other all-stars that we're trying to acquire to make the team better. Fuck you. Like, I don't know what else to say at this point. Like, go fuck yourself. Like, you don't you don't want to win. Like, you are, you are a fan of a player. You're not a fan of the Heat. I want the Heat to get better so they can win a championship because that is my favorite team. You get attached to these fucking absolutely absurd 18th picks that they have two good games and now they're like, oh, now I can tweet about them and make a whole fucking Muse account about them and, and try to, you know, make my entire personality about this 45-year-old rookie that's averaging 12 points per game. Like, congratulations. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. I'll never understand it. And I, I'm someone that has been surprised at what we've gotten from Jaime this year because I expected him to be worse than what he is. And, and the fact that he's given us, like, 12 and 4 and 3 in a in a role player type role i was expecting like four and two and two like in limited minutes so i'm mildly surprised and when again this isn't me hating on him this is me reacting to the pedestal that you put him on the same thing happened with another player on this team when you talk about he's in the same conversation as trey young and luka Doncic and devin booker you put him on that pedestal if he does not reach that height then i'm going to criticize him in the light that you put him in he did that you himself, said to be fair true but the, the the fan base definitely you know gassed him up on that as well they ate that you shit up they ate that Shelton, shit up we, we tried to and we said this earlier in the year yeah we, we did we tried we was like please don't do this because if he ever doesn't live up to what the pedestal that you guys put him on then it's our responsibility i ain't gonna, we, I like we literally said we literally said we don't want we to like dislike him. Jaime. We we want to like him. 
<laughs> and you motherfuckers did it anyway. And now I'm going to tell you that he's been asked the last 25 games and the stats back that up and you can't dispute that. Sorry. But they will. But they will. Like it, and the talking to you, like, bro, Lola. <laughs> What's up, Justin, bro? Uh, I got two things I just want to uh, share real quick. Uh, I just want to translate what Alex just said. Uh, he fans, stop glorifying these crackers. Uh, and here's the second <laughs> thing. Um, New wanted me to share this clip. Uh, I'm just going. 138 on them down in Georgia. Turnover time taken by Johnson. He's going to go all the way and throw it down. And one. Wow, what a way to start the game. Was that Austin Reeves getting his, getting some hey, genitalia put in his face? I saw a young, I saw a young white man try to take a charge. That's what we need on our team. If you're gonna be I white on the roster, I need you to at least try to take a charge. See Tyler Hero, he don't be taking. I'm gonna always win somewhere somebody in that debate. Somebody told us that he Mexican, brother. You, that's you, Let me tell you oh. the rules of the basement. If oh. you ain't black. You are white. <laughs> All right. And Roy, can I take this one? You realize, ladies sure. and gentlemen, that it is possible to be Hispanic and white. It is possible that to be Latino race and, and white. You see, whiteness <laughs> is a social construct brought about beginning in the 19th century. That, <laughs> that wasn't me. But thank God for whoever yeah, did. Right I, I appreciate you, brother. You're not going to educate me on the history of white people. Don't care. Don't want to hear it either. At all. And uh, since this video has already been demonetized, so we showing because we showing NBA highlights, Justin, go find some more good NBA highlights. Ricky, you can come back, but don't talk about white people no more. I've seen you like start to huff. I was educating gotta, them. I was educating decide. them. Do that on your right? time. Not on basement. Right, correct. Y'all follow Ricky it's J. Mark on Twitter. Oh, oh, oh. Ricky J. Mark uh, on basement time. We talk about black people. But yeah, we, uh, it's a, I see all whites on the screen now. I'm white. Bro, can we get the car lottery? No, we got to let LJ We gotta let LJ pick his uh, who was sorrier between um, Jaime Jaquez and Terry Rozier and I'm then lying. we'll get the car lottery. I'm not sorry. No, can, <laughs> I know. Go ahead, go ahead, LJ. I'll, I'll keep it short. Um, I I, I think that the uh, the best 18th pick of all time was the worst one tonight. That's what I think because when Shelman showed that picture, you mean to tell me that Hame Hakez is better than J.R. Smith, than Prime J.R. Smith, than you want the pipe J.R. Smith, that J.R. Smith? No, no, it's he's not he. He, he was in a dunk contest like J.R. Smith. That's about where the comparison stopped. Because one's an NBA champion and the other one's not. One flew from like right around the free throw line and posterized like Gary Neal or something against the Spurs. One has done that. The other has not. That's one One literally. What what did he do, Ricky, for the Knicks when he hit that, that three-pointer? He got down and went like that at half court. That's more entertaining than anything Hawk has, has done in his career so far. He needs to be better. Three for 13. Hey, come on now. I, all I'm going to say, I'll, I'll close with this. If you go back and look at the couple post-game shows I've been on this season, you mm. definitely won't see a clip of me saying that Jame Jaquez was the second best rookie this year. You <laughs> definitely won't find that clip. If you do, it's AI generated. It doesn't exist. Did I see the Did name? Did I see Scoot Henderson? Oh, no, that is not Scoot. <laughs> Who entangled in this? <laughs> Did I see the brother? I was looking. I was like, "Wait a minute, now." Yeah, I, I was like, "Poop Henderson is not above Hame." Like, though. For, it feels well, like it's right. It looked like it to me. It, according to NBA.com, poop is better than Heine. Uh, apparently, that I mean, all I'm saying is, I knew for sure Scoot Henderson was trash. Like throughout the course of his rookie season. Definitely right. didn't live up to expectation, but like nah, I gotta I gotta cook, bro, because he's 34 years old, so he should be more effective than this. Hey. <laughs> Real, I one. Do that. Real one. Hey. How many hot For all his elder elderliness, like brother, your savvy bag and your creative bag. 
needs to expand a little bit. But <laughs> like, nobody, I think the league has figured you out, bro. Like, you going to try to bull your way to the rip just like the man you in commercials with. Like, bro, he tries to shoot over everybody. Yeah, you here, bro. So, I mean, you wasting your time. You're contributing to the 420 people that are in here. You can get the fuck out if you want. Though. Imagine you watching something you don't Renee, like for 50 talking. minutes. Leave a like, though, while you're here, please. Yeah, for real. Before you get out of here, leave a like. The footwork, the footwork ain't moving. It ain't moving people, bro. Because it's like the footwork is always after he picks up his dribble. Like he tried to shoot over Mo Bamba and Kelly Olynyk. When he gonna try and pass the ball? That's bro. That's what I'm saying. When is he gonna ever pass the ball in the in the fast break situation? That's not a lot. That's it. He bro, like I think I think for Jaime Hawkins, like what it is is kind of like, yeah, okay. So he came out to the league, he was more well prepared than a lot of other rookies because he had spent four years in college. But I think at this point in the season, we're starting to figure out like why he is, why he spent four years in college. There's like limits to what he can do, and part of those limits involve decision making because Bruggett like tunnel vision a lot in that transition, like, and he's going up with shots. Somebody mentioned it in the comments that he got blocked six times tonight at the rim. And it's, it's just general, like, lack of awareness of where yourself, where you are and where teammates are in order for you to move that ball around. We have 51 minutes on a night of a back-to-back. My brother, y'all ain't getting much more content than that from out of us. But we're going to go to the next game anyway to try and help y'all close the night out. Um, we're going to Cleveland on 320 at 7 p.m. Let's start with LJ. LJ, the boy feeling good? Um, I'll just say we didn't get to touch on Kyle Lowry pause. So I'll ju- I just want to say this real quick. That's all I wanted to say on Kyle Lowry. He had 16 points tonight, which is the most points he has had since a Miami Heat uniform on the day of December 14th when he scored 17. Best game for Kyle Lowry in nearly four months. Over four months, matter of fact. So um, your Miami Heat, ladies and gentlemen. Um, This next game against the Cavs. It doesn't matter who's playing for the Cavs because they have that Miami Heat voodoo energy right now because they won tonight in Indiana without, like, half of their roster. They, that's just what they continue to do this season. They have the voodoo magic going in the regular season. Will that translate to the playoffs? I don't know, but that's not what you asked me. Um, I think the Heat probably lose because Cleveland has just – they've been very good. It doesn't matter who's out there for them. They're playing really, really good basketball, and I think that's going to continue against the Heat because will Jimmy show up to work? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Does his foot hurt? I don't f- apparently enough to miss a back to back when he already hasn't played in a, in a massively important game against a team an organization that he despises. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, poop layup. Spolstra was late on his post game. Interesting. Yeah, I oh, wonder why that. Could be. People, he was calling people niggas in that locker room. That's <laughs> he why was, yeah, he was probably. <laughs> yeah, he, but yes, he, he, they, he they, was, they lose the next game. game. Okay. Uh, I, I like what you did there, though. So, like, uh, when I ask you this question, pick something that we didn't talk about that you wanted to get off your chest about the game tonight, um, and then you can do your game prediction. So, Shelton, the boy feeling good? Um, No. I'm still thinking of something that we didn't touch on. Uh, Patty Mills, I mean, we kind of talked about it. Like, why the fuck is he getting 21 minutes? I'll just leave it at that. I don't need to expand on that. Um, but as far as the Cavs go, uh, I really, really hope Donovan Mitchell scores 70. Um, I want him to absolutely embarrass the fuck out of this team. Uh, I want every single Tyler hero stand to see they are not close. You are an idiot. I, I want you to know that. And I want, and you still will just be in denial anyway, but I will have just more ammunition, you know, for myself. So that'll just make me feel good. Um, and what are they like one in 18 versus the top six teams in the league? So they'll probably just lose that anyway. Uh, Jimmy won't play. He's bored. Uh, it's not April yet. Um, once April comes around, he'll start to play more. Uh, so we're still, you know, three, two weeks away from that. Uh, but yeah, they'll lose by 17. And they'll score 101 just to make everyone happy that they scored over 100. <laughs> Ricky, are you over there dutty whining? I two girls. I would. One of them. Two of them here. 
<laughs> Let a cheer the vibe, right there. Who the hell is show. Renee Zellweger? Who is this? <laughs> bro, Renee. Bro, stop, put, stop putting his shit on the, the thing unless he's going to donate. But yeah, like, give me. It's, it's cool, Renee, bro. Let, let him hate like, watch us for 55 minutes because he has nothing better to do with his piss listen, ass life. Renee, Fuck him. Listen, Renee. You do, Renee. Listen, there are plenty of people that make content in this space. If you do not like the content that the basement makes, then make sure that you find one of those other outlets that more closely suit what you're looking for. But in the meantime, since you are watching us, make sure you leave us a like, make sure you subscribe to the Basement Sports Network, and make sure you hit up the primary sponsor of the Basement Sports Network, which is Simple Health Advisors. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, insurance does not need to be complicated. Make sure you email our guy, James Pugh, or give him a call today and tell him that the basement sent you. Email him at jpu at simplehealthadvisors.com or give him a call at 321-345-7738. Again, that phone number is 321-345-7738. Seven seven three eight. And if your insurance needs are already met, but you have an upcoming party or event that you need a DJ for, then make sure you hit up the other sponsor of the Basement Sports Network, Aim High, Hit High, and Enterprises, and hit up my guy Jordan over at Jam E N T at Aim High Hit Higher dot com, or you can text him at five six one five nine two four one four six. Again, that's five six one five nine two four one four six. We well, appreciate you. He said, "Oh, he said y'all like talking shit. I'm just doing the same, brother. We always welcome it, now, brother. You can feel free to bring your ass back every show, <laughs> and we will happily take your comments and invite them happily... on stream. Yeah, we'll we'll pull your ass up here if you disagree. I think that's something that we're gonna try. Like some people who disagree with us, I'd rather like get some of y'all up here, try and see if y'all can beat us on this stream because y'all probably can't. Um, Ricky, the boy feeling good." pretty convinced that life's been pretty hard for that guy since they since Pornhub left Texas. I mean, there are other sites that you can occupy yourself with, buddy. Like, I I mean, I wouldn't know. I'm a good man. You know, I'm, I live a righteous lifestyle, so I wouldn't know nothing about that. But I do recommend you Google your way into your self gratification before you know what turns blue and you die. I highly recommend that for you i wish you well in your future endeavors and quite frankly hey brother tasty blacks ain't never failed me yet uh, oh oh that's all that's all ebony brother uh yeah but you didn't specify the gender <laughs> what a bit of great way to end i know that much um look hey, I, you yo. know i think i might be you right you right thank you yeah that's fair that's that's fair. That's fair. I respect it. I respect it. Thank you for holding me accountable. Look, I think I might be in the minority as it concerns Caleb Martin. I know that he did some goofy stuff tonight, but that just that's the Caleb Martin experience. It probably won't cost you a game. I will tell you this, though. What I saw to him in terms of his intangibles, his basically giving his life, his body up for Pakistan, he was awesome. Okay. I he, he brought us back Amen. into it. Amen. Amen. Be woman. Uh, hey, and I think it's hey, I think it's on, work. On, I think on, it's man. wonderful to see yeah, what Caleb silly, Martin to see what Caleb you. Martin was able to do. We not really he really he really did his thing. And I think ultimately and he's so gonna do Saturday the best he can to you will sit here and talk about how all right, great. I love this. I think yeah, he's gonna do the best he can to ultimately help the hardest working in the potential playoff game. And I think and at this point, up here and talk about I'm not Martin sure that Ryan is gonna time. bring him back in right, the offseason because it's crazy. But like I, I think he's gonna command a great deal of money in the offseason. What you're saying is once he commands once he commands a certain amount of money in the offseason, it's highly likely that if we based on what we've seen this Renick year or in the past, he's right. probably going to end up with the Lakers. This man he's is probably going to end up with the Lakers. He has and a it's, robe on. It's kind of funny how Miami player continues player. to churn he out role players. Right. He's when they're with about the, people coming from the bottom and building them up to get them paid. But we don't want the end of the day, though, Caleb we Martin trying to get to did We're trying to get these average jobs. So we want talent on this And at the end of it all, if you follow his model, you're going to end up like the Knicks. If I keep talking about the Knicks at the stream, he's going to be like, I, heard you talk about I don't know if he's going to be a long-term player as right far as Miami's concerned. So that's just my thoughts on on Caleb well, Martin. As far as their, as far as Miami playing later up. this week against you the Cavs, keep trying to get into your bag. You uh, looking up the Anthony's probably you know you gonna lose, but so at this funny. point, I don't even keep going on because at the end of the day, I never lose. 
So I'm gonna keep going. He lost. He tapped out. He quit the game. So just like that, I, I finished win. my thought. You lose. <laughs> oh shit! I finished, I finished my thought. I, I won, brother. It doesn't matter. It's okay. I'm collect the your wins when you can find them. Oh no, I'm always winning, brother. Every day I wake up. Oh. <laughs> ah. Why did it end? I don't. Play the video, Justin. <laughs>